being nice. <laughs> <laughs> feel like a mini Yoda. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Just going to wait a few more minutes till we get started. But welcome to Parent Dashboard Presents events for uh, September uh, 2022. Um, we are so lucky today to have Vicki Ellis here with us. And uh, Vicki is a lovely lady who I've been working with for some time now, and she lives near Confluence, France. So we're <laughs> it's sort of like uh, near the home of pottery in France. I'll have to get her to, to tell us a bit more, but she's a clarity coach. And today she's gonna help us with dealing with empty nester syndrome, which is a thing for me right now. And I, I gotta tell you, um, at those of you who have been following along on uh, Parent Dashboard's development and uh, my son's story, uh, it has been a journey. And um, you know, sometimes your identity gets all caught up in, you know what you're doing uh, for your complex needs child and basically you can get it gets so intense in supporting them that you have invested everything 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 in your child's success and you've celebrated all the little wins and just the right now i'm actually literally tomorrow my son's birthday uh we're going through the adult transition and i am already finding myself you know sort of like <laughs> about about how things are going to go for him and you worry about whether they're going to be okay and you worry about whether people are going to they're vulnerable and worry about you know where the money's going to come from and all these things so your 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 whole sort of identity and existence starts getting tied up in your role as a parent and so part of what i love about what vicky um does is that she really helps us uh provide clarity and she's a clarity coach um former teacher mom of two up and quit her job and sold her house and moved to france after her uh it, it sort of i'm gonna say middle midlife crisis but her empty nesting part and she is going to help us today so i just i'm gonna try and in hers here so you can actually see her um thank you Vicky, for being here today how are Hi. you oh it's great i'm so pleased to be here it's exciting but so it's, people it's a difficult time it, yeah yeah no and people are going to hear your accent and say that's not from france can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself and, and what you do <laughs> Well, I was an English teacher for over 20 years and um, I just teaching teenagers 11 to 18 and I just got to the point where I just had enough and everything around me started to go wrong. I had the neighbor from hell. I, I wouldn't even begin to describe that, but it was, oh, it was awful. And things just escalated and, and, and we just said, what can we do? let's move to France, completely crazy idea. But it was something we'd always wanted to do. And we'd always said, oh no, no, when the kids are older, no. Well, we actually, before we had kids, let's go now. My family said, no, definitely not. That's a terrible idea. So we, we put it off, put it off. And eventually we just went, we just had to go for it. And I think because Brexit happened in Britain, it was like, it was then or never. We were never gonna do it. We're, Oh, I'm, well, so, I'm so grateful every day that I did. <laughs> well, and, and you you told me before too that it was also tied up with your your frustration over your job too, right? Like you weren't satisfied in your job. Can you you know no. like? A... No, I just I always I I liked my job, but I just felt like I was I was just meant for more, and it was just the and and teaching the way that it was going in England was we give you the script and we tell you what to do and we judge you on your results and that's it and that isn't why i went into teaching i went into teaching to see kids get radical transformations for for them to get the results that i thought they really deserved even though they didn't believe it because i always worked in the the tougher schools the schools where the kids would generally lack confidence and they didn't have the parents behind them who who'd been to university who could say yeah you can do it and it was all very oh I don't know I don't want my child doing that I'm not sure about that because I've not done it so it was and and but they took 
increasingly they took that power away Hmm. from the teacher in the classroom and you were no you must do this this and this and I always was drawn to being more of a teacher but a a counselor a coach uh, you know you are you've you've created um, (laughs) (laughs) so what I did was create my own job without even realizing it And now you've been, uh, you know, we've been working together. You've been, you've got this uh, program that you run and, and you're a clarity coach. So you get to help, you know, transform people in other ways. So that's awesome. And so um, I, I just really felt like your skills and what you like to help people with could really actually help parents generally, but also especially complex needs parents like me. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're just delighted to have you here today to talk about mm-hmm. empty nesting syndrome. So, okay, just so that I can tick all the boxes, tell me what empty nest syndrome is like what what tell me about it well I mean it's a terrible term isn't it empty nest syndrome it feels horrible doesn't it it's when you your kids have gone they they they've either gone into residential care or they're they've gone to university or they've left to get a job somewhere across country and it's that moment when you turn around and you look at your house and you it's empty and you know your fridge is empty you go shopping and you don't have to buy as much food and yeah that's great but at the same time it's like oh well I oh and it can that can bring you to tears standing in the supermarket it's that moment where you go home and you walk into their bedrooms and it's beautifully neat and tidy which it never ever was was when they were living with you (laughs) and it's moments like that and it's you know that the the kind of they say the three key emotions are grief and fear and worry and an emptiness but it can also manifest as anger and irritability um, and a sense of insecurity because your identity particularly as a, a special needs parent has been so tied up with your child and putting them first that you're now thinking well what's next what what do I do and there's a there's that's tied there's a guilt tied in with that as well I think right you know it's sort of a uh, almost a bit taboo to say okay disabled kid you're out the door bye you know (laughs) like think about yourself right because um you you know it's they especially when they maybe aren't independent and they can't for themselves or you know that sort of thing so Okay, so um, that's a lot to manage. And yes, tick, tick, yeah. tick, tick, tick. I have ticked all boxes. So tell me how I manage this. How do I manage emptiness syndrome? Okay, well, I have the are you ready approach. And the A, I, uh, Shelley knows me and she knows I like these little mnemonics. And R is A-R-E, which stands for uh, acceptance reframe or reconnect and embrace and if we you know I'll start with acceptance first I mean first of all you just you have to give your yourself permission to that that it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling because it might it, it's a grieving process it's just like when we lose somebody we have to accept that we it's a process that we have to go through and we can get stuck in it if maybe our marriage is a bit wobbly or we're so tied in our identity is a parent and we're like well what who am I when I'm not looking after the kids and all of that has an impact so accepting those feelings um I mean we say I I one technique that I think is brilliant for this is just sitting and feeling and just breathing deeply just giving yourself time to just let those because those feelings out because so often we rush around we keep it the, some of the advice they tell us is keep busy no matter what keep busy and it's just it's masking what you're feeling sometimes you have to stop being busy in order to feel what you're feeling and 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 in that way that's the important first step because you can start to release those feelings. Otherwise, they just get bottled up and you, you're stuck there a lot longer. I would love to hear how people um, who are either you know watching this live or who are watching this on replay connect with what you're saying. Like, are you guys, how are you guys feeling out there? Have you experienced any of these, you know, fear, grief, emptiness, anger, uh, guilt? 
pieces? Uh, how are you? How are you? How are you? How's it sitting with you? Have you been able to have time to sit with it? Um, like mm -hmm. Vicky's thing. Okay, so so you're saying A for his acceptance and sitting with it. That sounds. I, I can I can set you know like set some time or try and squeak it in. Um, then what? Yeah, I mean, if you just started with five five minutes in your day after you get up, just sit. Even lying in bed. I mean, it's the perfect place. Just sit and breathe and feel and allow those feelings to come up and and just see what your what your brain and your heart is telling you i think yeah. i mean there are lots of there's, there's meditation there's tapping there are lots of techniques out there that that help you kind of address those feelings because it, it isn't easy to because those feelings are not nice and sometimes we're just avoiding facing them but it's definitely the first step is to accept them yeah Okay, so and, and, and then in your R yeah. acronym, uh, what's your uh, what's your R? What's the A R? Is to reframe. Is to is to kind of uh, once you once you've started to accept those feelings, you'll find that there's a feeling of what's possible, and then you start to think about oh well, what might be possible, and at that point you can start to think of you can look at um reconnecting with friends you can start to think about well what did i enjoy doing before i even had kids what what you know take yourself right back to when you were first you were first leaving home and how you felt and and fight and and sort of just re regreet that that part of you that you've kind of shut off for so long because you've been responsible and you've been focused on your children and and it's kind of it's almost like a, a, a getting to know you um stage all over again with with yourself really so reconnect reframe and and another take on the reframe is is to put it as a question to say well okay i'm not spending all my time with these responsibilities so i've got all this time that i could use in a different way and how how else could I be purposeful? And how else can I be useful? And do, do a little bit of dreaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. Definitely the time for for a bit of dreaming. So uh, you know, and we can ask folks to say, um, you know, what if if you did have time? Because a lot of the times we're so like jammed into what we need to do, got to yeah. go, you know, managing crises, that sort of thing. Um, yeah if you did have the time what would you do you know because I've, yeah. had, I've had people ask me okay well what do you enjoy and I'm like um uh <laughs> you know like in general I I was know. At a loss. like and 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 uh, you know you, if you if you lose that part of yourself where you actually don't have your your own happiness like your own joy your own feeling of centeredness or what is unique to you and what you like to do um it can be really um jarring when all of a sudden everything else is taken away because you're like okay well what do i do now so i loved i'd love to hear in the chat you know um what your dream would be or what you did i love that point too about um you know wh what were you like when you left home and, yeah <laughs> and 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 how can you regret yourself so so what you would have been like when you left home and what your dream would be now and see if those are the same or not that's cool yeah yeah okay, well, so so that's just be curious acceptance reframe curious. acceptance reframe oh, and and embrace okay. it's time to embrace your relationships i mean your relationship with your children is going to change you're, you're still going to be their parents but there might be a there's a shift in this in the the nature of the relationship and embrace that shift and also if you're you know if you have a partner or a marriage it's that time to think how do we reconnect together because you've spent so long dealing with crises and focusing on the children that you can often find that you've you've just i mean people say or oh, we stay together for the children but i don't think that's necessarily true it's just that that's where your focus goes and that's that's the kind of priority for both partners and then 
when that's gone, you've got time to, to reconnect. So think back to when you were you first met them or you you were first married or what you used to enjoy doing before you had kids even. So do you, you can remember? It, it's, it seems like anecdotally you hear like that's a lot of the time where, you know, marriages dissolve because it's like the yeah. kids are out of the house. I don't have a reason yeah. anymore. Is that actually true? Or and and if it is true, how can people kind of like avoid that? It's just like the reconnection or, or what should be people be thinking about during the emptiness period? Unfortunately, it, it, there is a statistic that's quite it's I think the the divorce rate for America is has the highest statistic in the empty nesters category. So it, it, it is true that that can happen, but it's certainly not, you know, it's not. Um, for, foregone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not a foregone conclusion. It's relationships. You just have to remember that any relationship takes work. Your relationship with your kids takes work. Your relationship with your partner is always going to take work and it's kind of just embracing who they are and kind of putting I think one step one vital step is to put aside any resentments that you might have over the roles that you've you've been pushed into perhaps over the years to to lay that aside and and try and reconnect to each other on a on a on the on a friend level on a it's like we it's like um getting to know each other all over again and i think a, another key step is if you reconnect with yourself and have that that good relationship with yourself that will always mean that any relationship you have with anybody else is going to be on a higher level anyway well i so think I that's think a really great point because you know right. especially as special needs parents um or complex needs parents you you do uh get into these roles right because a lot of the time what mm -hmm. happens is the crisis forces you into tag teaming and so you get more and more okay you do this and i do that and and then your ships in the night you know like okay you're up mm -hmm. with them this night and i'm up with them next night and you got the school and i've got the food and i've got the finances and you got the you know like it's you it's divide and conquer right and um but but in doing that there's some isolation and so yeah. you're you're kind of apart and you need to figure out how to and, and and a lot of the times um there's a really high divorce rate in special needs like complex needs parents anyway because of that but then you know if you don't take the focus time to to reconnect um and it can also help you with um with siblings of uh complex mm -hmm. needs kids because it's sort of like um complex 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 child no, um sibling complex 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 sibling and and there's a little bit of a discrepancy in the amount of, it necessitates the 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 in additional needs necessitates additional focus and it can become imbalanced and so your relationship can become imbalanced so that embracing mm -hmm. the relationships um especially with yourself afterwards yeah, well. <laughs> you're like okay here's all my energy you know? uh, who am i again right so yeah, it's powerful it, you, you take back your power by thinking about well what is my relationship with myself and starting to appreciate yourself as well being you know and being grateful for the things that your partner does right and the, the qualities you, that you do love about your partner because it's very easy we all do it focus on the negative but it's just choosing where we put our focus focusing on the positives for sure and and there's one there's um if you know the love languages that's a good place to start so right. if you find out which of which love language you and your partner has and it's easy you could just go online and put in the five love love languages and it it brings up the test but yeah, that's really we, interesting i'll have to we'll have to make sure we put that link in there too so um that's great so well i mean in talking of um tips and to i mean were you so it was are you ready and so that's acceptance reframe embrace does the you ready also have steps that you're going no, through that's just the opposite <laughs> so is... i keep it really simple and sweet accept refrain embrace but that's so powerful <laughs> because it's like a really short way to yeah. um, you know remember the big key steps 
right? Yeah. And you know that I love your mnemonics. <laughs> you you need a mnemonic then. This, this ex-teacher knows how to do that. People go to her for that. So yeah. I do, they do. Yeah. indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, but that, um, you know, tools like that five long languages test, what, what other tools and tips and tricks can I extract from your mind about how to manage empty nesting? Because um, yeah, we need some strategies here. Um, well, you, I think it, accepting the timing of it all, being supportive of your child. And, and the main thing is seek support from other people. I think it's really important to have, if you've got support around you, if you've got friends who are going through the same things, you know, that, that kind of level of support is important that you and, that you and your partner can, can share in. Um, things like um, look for new opportunities personally and professionally. So um, think about what you could, I mean, things like volunteering is really good because it will, it kind of um, ups your so uh, up to your social um, level. If you're more social, you're more, um, you've got more compassion and that compassion is for yourself and for others. And it, it just makes your kind of your experience of life more positive because you're, you, it kind of reminds you that it's not all about me that, you know, this, this is, Turning our minds outward is a good way to to kind of retain the positive, even though we're going through these feelings of grief and emptiness. And it's it's because it's not like saying, oh, just put a positive smile on it. It's sort of accepting and then trying to find little ways where you can be positive. So things like yeah. volunteering and your social group and looking for outside support all of those things, even, I mean, I've seen um, various lists on the internet of people suggesting things. It's like, take up gardening, um, adopt a pet. I, d I don't know if I'd recommend that one, but <laughs> there are so many kind of things that you can, you can do. Good. New hobbies, reconnect with old friends are all tips and tricks. I do have one practical tool that I can walk you through. Oh, that would be fantastic. Okay, lay it on. Okay. So it's a bit like a, uh, a mini life audit, um, but instead of looking at um, your kind of your purpose, wealth, health, it's things like, so if you want to write these down, it is physical. So these are the key areas that we're going to write down physical. So that's your, your kind of your physical body, the level of um, exercise that you do. Your health. Um, yeah. So physical, yeah, physical health, spiritual. And that doesn't necessarily mean because, you know, your relationship with God, it can be much bigger than that. It can be you can have a spiritual practice of meditation but not believe in God. I mean, it, it depends on the individual. So physical, spiritual, I like this one, creative. Okay. <laughs> Social. And the final one is community. So I've kind of mentioned those two already. So if you give yourself a mark out of, say naught to five for each of those areas with naught being terrible not even thought about it it's not where I want to be at all and five being perfect and, and I always Americans she means zero to five. <laughs> oh, zero. yes yeah, sorry <laughs> <laughs> zero to five okay <laughs> five being perfect but I, ne I never use perfect because there's always a little room for improvement I always I think that's quite I actually kind of like not but <laughs> not to five right <laughs> not to five so with those when you give yourself a score you can see which areas you you kind of um you're I suppose weaker in so you could what you could do is then pick one area to focus on that you really want to see an improvement so you could list my question is what baby action step could you take 
to see an improvement in this area. So for example, if it was creative and you think, oh, I don't have any creative heart. I'm never creative in my life. You could think of something creative that you could do. Maybe it can be painting, it can be crafts, it could be the way you use words. That, I mean, creative has a, it's a very broad uh, spectrum. Whatever you find uh, inspiring. Yeah, yeah okay. but uh, social is obviously is your friendship groups and community is, is it, I mean, when I, when I moved here, we were very isolated. We, if I, I'd, I'd have put a zero, a zero, a naught for a community. And it was something we had to actively, you know, get out there and find our community because being part of a community is, it, it makes you feel good. It, it's a, it comes back to that thing of it's not all about you. There's a bigger, a bigger picture out there and you can be big of some, part of something bigger. Uh, my uh, science geek brain turned this into a pie chart and if I oh, yeah. were able to roll down the street yeah. mine would be very lumpy <laughs> you know because oftentimes we leave off very you know in, you know huge chunks of ourselves you know we're yeah. we're, we're so focused and uh, yes. remembering to have that balance yeah um, well, that's why I thought pick to pick those particular topics because it's not what you would usually think of if you were doing a little audit of your life you usually think in terms of relationships wealth purpose right um, health. but these are kind of getting perhaps I'm picking a bit more of what it is you like to do what 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 inspires you what can you know you, I mean you might love to be part of a community you might have been a member of every club when you were when you were at university or wherever in your first job you always volunteered to do all the duties yeah. and now you feel you know you've lost your community and it's a part of you that you know is is obviously important to you needs to be uncovered rediscovered I like that word rediscovered yeah Okay, so so this is just like, and I know how deeply this is. I, I know what work you do, and I know how surf surface we've gotten today. But even today, mm -hmm. what you've shared with us about like what it is and how to manage it, and it's just some of the starter tools and thoughts around acceptance and reframing and embracing, and and then this tool to kind of like, okay, where am I at? Um, I know that you have much. Uh, deeper um, ability to help help folks through this. So I, I wanted to uh, ask if anybody has appreciated. If you're watching this on replay or you you're watching right now live, let us know. Let us thank Vicky for for what she's done and let us know how that's helped you um, so far. Like what the best thing out of this is so far. Because I want to tell you that Vicky has um, uh, you know far more to offer and and I want to talk with you about how people can connect with you or and I, I know you haven't ebook can you tell us about the ebook that you wrote i do i have written a, a short ebook which kind of summarizes a few of the things that i've said um in this talk this evening um and um i've put that as a if i give you the link for that it's available on my uh, my landing page if you like and my sure, website we'll, we'll pop that in the chat so people can get that yeah. free it's a free ebook it is free yeah i also have at the moment i have a um a course or the which um outlines five practical tools for uh, sort of busting through your blind spots it's kind of it, in other words it's re how do you reconnect with yourself it's five practical tools um one of them we kind of looked at although i do it differently within the course but i do do an audit which oh. is really useful so okay. there is an audit section in there, but that I'm offering with a um, a discount. So it's seventeen dollars with the oh, discount for, for, for our attendees, for people who for come and especially for your attendees, get a discount. Okay. And if you go to the landing page, you get your free ebook and you get the code that you have to. You, there's a link to the course, and if you put the code in, you'll get your discount. Ah, thank you. <laughs> And, and I'm um, always available for one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Should you need me? 
Well, and, and um, Vicki is in the parent dashboard community. So even if you're watching this on replay and something comes up for you or you're like, oh, what was that again? And you're watching it and you're, you're like, okay, I'm there now. I'm like, pin this post or save this post in your, in your you know, resources for the future. If your kid's only in like grade eight or whatever, you know, like, or if you just uh, got toddlers right now, because you will need this information later. And uh, Vicki will be in our community and, and able to, if you just leave a comment, I'm sure sure she'll be get notification and ha be happily chiming in to see what she can oh. do to help. Yeah, definitely. More than happy. And you've just touched on another point that I, I forgot to mention is be prepared. That is another key tip. Be prepared for this. Don't wait until it happens. Get yourself prepared. Right. Think ahead. That yeah. is something that is sometimes a luxury yeah. and also yeah. super important because that's kind of like how we yeah. head on crises too, right? Like if you have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah better to be proactive than reactive. It keeps all of those the 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 inner critic and the evil part of your brain that wants to uh, derail you it keeps that in check if you're planned and prepared. <laughs> Aw, well, um, so, okay, so in the comments, we're going to put the link to the landing page with the ebook and the and the course discount. Uh, we're going to put the five la love languages test. We're going to put a uh, link to Vicky's. Um, you have a you have a community that if people want to join to get kind of just like hang out and like learn more yeah. about different things. I do. Can... I'm doing a challenge in there at the moment about mas mastering your inner critic, a 30 day challenge. To, to, to master that evil inner critic <laughs> i have been following that and i am keeping oh, it there. so I'm, <laughs> it's been really good you guys can go back through it and watch that so we'll put the link to the facebook group oh, as well. and then you guys can keep up with vicky who is an awesome i not become an awesome friend and an awesome resource for our community we're just so oh. thankful you're here today thank you so much Oh, thank you. It's been an, a, an honor and a pleasure, Shelley. It has. Awesome. Okay, well, um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, just like pop them in the chat. We'll catch up with you after. And I hope you all have a great weekend and happy fall. It's fall equinox. Oh, and, uh, hope you all had a, a really good school year transition for those of you still there. And uh, just know that Parent Dashboard is still working hard on its uh, its uh, uh, team here in Greater Victoria and Southern Vancouver and Ireland in Canada, and uh, our social purpose enterprise where we do uh, business to business coaching, helping you get your uh, offer online, much like Vicky did here, and <laughs> and that she you know like and and so we we help people figure out when you're empty nesting. If you need something to do and you want to make some extra income and make an impact and transformation on someone's life um, to to be able to kind of like pull that out of the ether and make it real and actually learn the skills you need so that someone would actually click the buy button. Um, that's that's actually what uh, Parent Dashboard is doing as its fundraiser to be able to lower the prices for special needs parents for respite. So. Um, we're still working on all of that and having a great time doing it. We get to meet beautiful people like Vicky and uh, bring you great resources like Vicky. So, uh, so we're really <laughs> happy. It's a kind of a win-win-win. So, um, hope you're all staying well and finding better balance. And we will catch you next month uh, for the next Parent Dashboard Presents events. So, thanks, Vicky. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>